In module 3.3, we're going to be talking about the two types of errors that we might find in our ER modeling, semantic errors and syntactical errors. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how we manage those errors. Data modeling errors may be syntax related, which means that we just use the symbols incorrectly. And these are relatively easy to spot by anyone who understands how to create an ER model because we're just using the symbols incorrectly. We don't really have to know anything about the problem at hand. All we have to know to spot and resolve these are how to use ER grammar properly. The more difficult errors to manage, though, are semantic errors, which means the model does not accurately reflect our business rules. And these are more difficult to spot because they do require an understanding of the problem we're trying to solve. And also, sometimes these are related to judgment calls, where we've had to interpret what we think the business people meant. For example, it can be a little difficult to understand if a particular object should be modeled as an entity or an attribute or if it's a value or, or part of a relationship or something like that. And this can be a little bit of a trial and error uh, type process and it's something that just becomes easier with experience. And sometimes it can be kind of difficult to know exactly how something should be modeled until we start modeling it and experience some type of failure. And, you know, this may be something that you experienced in assignment one and will probably be something you experience in assignment two that you start going down a path a little way and then you realize that, oh no, I should have modeled this a little bit differently. So you kind of have to iterate through the process and go back and, and try again. And that's just kind of the nature of data modeling and solving these problems. Now, let's take a moment to consider this story to illustrate our semantic and syntax errors. There are several colleges in the university. Each college has a name, location, and size. A college offers many courses, which are described by their course number, name, and number of credit hours. The college also has several instructors. Instructors teach courses, but not all instructors are scheduled to teach during all terms. All courses must be taught by an instructor. Instructors are capable of teaching multiple courses offered by the college. Instructors have a unique employee ID and their name, qualification, and experience are also recorded. Now, as we read through this story, I see several data elements which might be attributes, they might be entities, they might be part of relationships. I see quite a few business rules that are being described. Let's, uh, let's take a stab at drawing an ERD to capture this. Now, if you guys weren't as good at data modeling as I know you already are, this might be what you came up with, right? You say, well, I read through this story and I, I heard about colleges and I think that's probably an entity. And then I heard about these other things, instructors and courses and uh, names and qualification and experience. And those all just sound like attributes. And maybe they're all attributes of the college. And in fact, if you modeled it like this, this is syntactically okay. We have used all of our ER grammar, right? All of the little dots and, and things like that to represent attributes, and this is syntactically okay. However, this doesn't really capture all of our business rules correctly because we say colleges can have multiple instructors and courses. And the way this is modeled currently is if we had multiple courses, then we would have to repeat all of our instructor values for every course. Or if we have multiple instructors, we would have to repeat all of the course values for every instructor. We wind up with just a ridiculous amount of redundant data in this approach to modeling this. We could resolve this by making instructor and course multi-value attributes and this is still syntactically okay right because we're using all of the grammar in an appropriate way but we are not capturing this business rule where we say instructors teach courses okay so maybe we say well we can resolve that by putting a relationship between the instructor attribute and the course attribute right we have a one-to-many relationship between instructors and courses now this is syntactically incorrect because we can only have a relationship between two entities, 
right? We can't have a relationship between attributes. So we've solved the semantic problems, right? But this is now a problem of syntax and anyone who knows how to create an ER diagram should be able to look at this and immediately know that something is wrong, okay? So we need to change the way we're modeling this a little bit to resolve our syntax error now. So I'm going to suggest that this model is going to solve our syntax problems and our semantic problems. So we're capturing that uh, name and qualification and experience and all the stuff about instructors are not attributes of the college, but rather these are attributes of an entity called instructors, which is in a relationship with college. Okay, so a college has many instructors, but an instructor is employed by just one college. And kind of similarly, these attributes like name and credit hours and course number are not attributes of the college, but they're attributes of an entity called courses, which is in a relationship with college. And a college offers a minimum of one and a maximum of many courses, and a course is offered by exactly one college. Then the attributes like name of the college, size of the college, and location of the college are all attributes of the college entity. And then we capture this one-to-many relationship between instructors and courses by creating a relationship between the instructor's entity and the course's entity. So now we are both semantically and syntactically correct. All right, let's have another example because as I'm interacting with things in my daily life, I'm just constantly thinking about how I would create data models to capture my interaction with things like my cell phone, right? And uh, I was going through one day and adding a contact in my cell phone and just kind of envisioning what the database backend of my contacts app in my cell phone must look like. Because of course, this is stored in a database of, of some sort. So as I'm looking at the screen where I capture all of these details about my contact, I see we have a name, a phone number, an email address, and some other stuff that we're not gonna talk about uh, right this minute. But uh, I'm kind of envisioning that I have an entity called contact, which requires a value for name. And then I've, I've tried it both ways. We don't have to have an email address and we don't have to even have a phone number, right? So I think these are both optional attributes. And another thing I observed as I started interacting with my contacts is that I can have multiple contacts that have the same name. So I'm pretty sure name is not a primary key, I think there's probably some other value that's being generated behind the scenes that's used as the primary key. And I'm just going to capture that here as contact ID. So I'm envisioning a model where I have this entity called contact, and then these four attributes, contact ID, name, email, and home phone. And I think at this point, this seems reasonable and it's syntactically correct, but I'm not quite sure this captures all of the business rules. Because as I dug in a little bit further, I found that I could click this plus sign and I had the option to add multiple phone numbers like mobile, home, work, main, work fax, home fax, pager, and things like that. So I found that I could add a mobile phone number to the same contact and also a work phone number and I could have multiple different types of phone numbers. Okay, so maybe the data structure actually looks something more like this, right? I have a contact that has a contact ID, a name, and optionally, an email address, home number, mobile number, work number, main number, work, fax, home fax, pager, and other. Okay, so this is still, the syntax is correct, and it seems pretty reasonable. But then I noticed this button that says create custom type. And so when I click on that, and I find that, yeah, I can create phone numbers for virtually anything I want. I have kind of unlimited options here. So now at this point, I'm not sure this data model does make sense because I can't just have an infinite number of types of phone numbers that I'm going to associate with this entity. So perhaps it's not that we have multiple attributes that capture different types of phone numbers, but rather phone number is a multi-value attribute. And of course we capture our multi-value attribute in a weak entity. 
Okay, and so now what I think we actually have is a contact entity that's in a relationship with this phone numbers entity. So if contact ID 101 has these four types of phone numbers, they just have one row in the contacts table and then four rows, one that represents each type of phone number in the phone numbers table. Uh, customer 102 has just one row in this contacts table and then three rows representing the three types of phone number that person has in the phone numbers table. So phone numbers is a weak entity and number is a partial key. In order to identify a specific row in this full numbers table, we have to have both the value of the contact ID and the number. But you might say, isn't phone number really a pretty unique thing? Hmm. Well, let's look at contact 102 and 104, right? They both have the same value for work number because I think they must work at the same place. So to uniquely identify this row, we have to have both the contact ID and the phone number. So 102-555-334-3434 uniquely identifies this row, and 104-555-334-3434 uniquely identifies this row. And this was a big part of the point of assignment one, to look at a system and kind of infer what the schema might look like. And as an outsider looking in, you're likely and almost definitely going to be wrong. And this is because you only see the external schema, the view of the data that's being presented to you as a user or you as an application. And many of the details and business rules are going to be hidden from you. And it can be sometimes difficult based on this to determine if something should be an entity or an attribute or a value or exactly how we should model it. But these are the types of skills that we're developing in this course and what we're going to be continuing to talk about for the rest of the semester.